I'm back indoors for another sick true story that most New Yorkers don't even know. And this one involves murder. <laughs> yeah, sorry, this is the only knife I have. Anyways, in 1906, one of New York City's most famous artists was murdered by a wealthy but crazy nutbag in dramatic fashion. And the court case that ensued was dubbed the trial of the century. I give you the tale of O.J. Simpson. I'm kidding. Uh, it's the story of Stanford White, but you should have seen your faces. Now, some of you may be thinking, Tom, who the f is Stanford White? Well, first of all, you kiss your mother with that mouth? Huh? Second of all, if you've ever been to New York City or even seen it in the moving pictures or TikToks that the kids are all watching these days, you've seen his or his firm's work. Now, White was born to a modest family in 1853, and instead of a traditional architect's education at schools like Paris's L'Ecole de Beaux-Arts, Stanford White starts out painting on his own and eventually lands an apprenticeship with Henry Hobson Richardson, a successful architect in Boston, whose work is Wicked Pissa. There, he meets Charles McKim, with whom he starts the firm McKim, Mead & White, being what many called the first mega architecture firm. Now, it's the Gilded Age, the 40-year period after the Civil War, when people were getting rich, baby and they wanted to show off their crud, baby. There was also crushing poverty and brutal racism, but that's for another video. A video I did on racism in New York City. <laughs> Sick plug. So the firm makes all kinds of huge commissions, with the biggest being the Washington Arch, which White made to commemorate the intro scene in When Harry Met Sally. I'm kidding again. It was actually to celebrate the centennial of Washington's inauguration, which happened in New York City. But your faces were priceless. Anyways, White becomes a big shot influencer bad boy. He goes to all the events, he's a man about town, and he's kind of a ladies man, which was not ideal for Mrs. White. Stanford White is kind of a dog. So White is hitting up all the clubs and nightlife in New York. He comes across Evelyn Nesbitt while she's starring in the show, The Wild Rose, and he is smitten. Evelyn Nesbitt came from a humble upbringing in Philadelphia and was discovered while working in a Wanamaker's department store and began modeling. She got into showbiz because back then, just like now, every pretty face thought that they could perform as well. <laughs> So White courts her. He helps her brother get into a good school, puts her family up at the Wellington Hotel, which is still there, BT dubs. Yeah, I'm young, so I talk in a breeze. <laughs> no big deal. Nesbitt and a friend also visit his apartment, and Nesbitt rides a secret red velvet swing that White had there. That's kind of weird, actually. Uh, she actually probably should have seen that as a red velvet flag. <laughs> Eventually, the mother relents to letting her young daughter visit him alone, and they consummate their love. <sighs> Well, technically, he got her really drunk. She didn't remember anything. And she was 16. Yikes. That's all true, by the way. Today, this story would have ended right here because White would have rightfully gone to jail. <laughs> Instead, they start an affair. Enter wealthy coal and railroad heir Harry K. Thaw, who completely obsesses over her. He is a simp, as the kids are saying these days. <laughs> he goes to like 40 of her shows, buys her stuff, takes her and her mom to Europe. Wonder if he's got a simp sister. Anyway, Thaw hates White because he thinks White is keeping him out of New York's social clubs, which is possible, but Thaw is also a complete psycho drug addict, so there's that too. Thaw also obsesses over the fact that White deflowered Nesbitt. In 1903, when Thaw took her and her mother to Europe, he wrote in a church guest book in Joan of Arc's hometown of Domremy, France, she wouldn't have been a virgin if Stanford White was around. Sick burn, Thaw Dog. Too bad White barely knows you exist. Anyway, Nesbitt eventually wants some economic stability, so after years of turning him down, she marries Thaw in 1905. This reminds me of the saying, if at first you don't succeed, be a rich dude. On June 25th, 1906, Thaw's hatred reaches a boil. During a stopover on their way to Europe, Thaw and Nesbitt catch a performance of Mamselle Champagne at Madison Square Garden. This was the second incarnation of the performance space that White had designed himself right on Madison Square, which is where it got its name. Oh. 
So after the show's finale of the song, I Could Love a Million Girls, which is ironic because White was a dog, Thaw gets up and walks right up to White's table and shoots him three times in front of everyone. He then yells, he ruined my wife. Stanford White is shot and dies on top of the building he built and designed. It's a scandal, baby. Thomas Edison even made a motion picture weeks after it happened called Rooftop Murder. Now, the first trial is held at Jefferson Market Courthouse and ends in a hung jury. The second trial has Thaw plead insanity and he's sentenced to the Matiawan Funny Farm. He escapes to Canada, then comes back and is ruled sane and set free. Crazy. And check out his jail cell before the trial. That's nicer than my apartment. Maybe I should murder an architect. So this is the part of the film where we do an update on what happened after the story uh, with touching music over it. Harry K. Thaw went free after seven years and maintained that his killing was justified. And a lot of people supported him, seeing that White was a sexual predator and all. He died of old age in the magical land where old murderers go to die. Florida. After White's death, McKimmead and White suffered as the times changed. It got the commissions to Penn Station, which I covered in my last video, sick plug, and the Municipal Building, which I covered in my Brooklyn Bridge and Tribeca videos, <laughs> sick plugs, but it eventually disbanded. Evelyn Nesbitt saw her name dragged through the mud during Thaw's trial, being publicly shamed. She remarried, but her new husband blamed her for his acting career stalling and eventually left her. She died in a nursing home in Santa Monica in 1967. Stanford White was dead. I mean, that's pretty much what this whole video is about. Wow, well, anyways, that's a story. Whew. Who'd have thought that behind some of New York's most beautiful architecture, there was such a salacious tale. Either way, it shows that in the city as intense as New York, behind every grand structure, person, or work, is an even grander tale. So the next time you are at the Washington Arch, look up and think of murder, Madison Square Garden, dogs, Joan of Arc, nutbags, and me. <gasps> this topic was chosen by my Patreon people. So if you liked it, please consider joining it. Link is in the description. And it's gonna help me take this to the next level to become a big shot influencer bad boy and be able to pay my rent. Also, please subscribe to the channel and follow on Instagram. <laughs> it's very helpful. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go take my knife and go ride my red velvet swing. I'm kidding, but your faces are priceless. <laughs>